What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, John McGarrett, and I'm back with another tips video, another little uh, uh, tips, tricks, whatever, life advice, coaching, whatever. You know, I want this to be a self-help coaching channel, and I just want to keep giving you value. This is what everything I can think of. I just look at the keywords, and then when I see people got questions about stuff, I just jump at it. And this one, I saw a keyword uh, search. It was how to keep a job, essential tips for job security. So then, you know, let's, that being said, let's just hop right into it. It's going to be a quick one, hopefully. I'm going to shrink myself here. So essentially... This video is going to be how to keep a job, essential tips for job security. Okay. So my top three, you know, just try to, the first things that jumped out at me, the, the best tips I could think of that like kept me alive at every single job I've had. I've never been fired uh, since at least my last five jobs. I always quit. So anyway, I know how to survive a job is what I'm saying. Like, uh, so the number one is uh, attendance. Uh, this is very self-explanatory. Attendance is the number one thing I see people fired for. So just show up to work. You don't like even if you're sick or dying or whatever. It's better to show up even if you're sick. If you're if you're worried about keeping your job, it's better to show up to your job and puke all over them. You know, embarrass yourself, whatever. They'll send you home. Don't let them send you home without an excused absence. This saves your six days. So when you're actually dying or something like that, you can keep your job. You'll have them on the standby. You know what I mean? But if you feel sick, go to work. Tell them you're sick. Cough on people. Do whatever it takes to get them to send you home. Don't just call it okay so attendance that's what i'm saying and if you like pre pre approve like doctor's appointments do other stuff like that talk to your manager get them to excuse your absence get them to excuse it don't ever call in without getting them to take responsibility for your absence um so then the second tip this is a big one is to be invisible if you show up and do your job don't really talk the yappers will keep the heat off you winky face and i say winky face because i'm one of those yappers i yap a lot and i know I've brought a lot of heat on myself, but I noticed with all the heat I brought on myself in um, observing my attention I get from management or other coworkers and stuff like that is that I noticed that there was other people who are just silent killers who would just sit there and like kind of sometimes some of them would gravitate towards me or whatever. And then they would just kind of hide within my gap. And then that works for it works for everybody. So if you just show up and just kind of hang out near people who are big yappers, but don't really contribute, you know, just smile and wave, you know. <laughs> They'll keep you invisible. So like, man, you know, the yappers when they're yapping, if you're just sitting around or whatever, and the talkers are talking, the talkers are going to get yelled at by the management team before you ever get called, like talked to at all. So, and it, it, it uh, keeps you invisible during the drama too. Cause if you just don't talk to people and you don't like uh, associate with the drama or don't have like have an opinion, keep it to yourself, don't contribute it to the group, stuff like that, then you're not really going to get on anybody's radar to be a target of like drama target of managerial um pressure or stuff like that you know what i mean if you just are invisible you're not creating you're not making any waves you you you're gonna survive at your job you're gonna keep your job and like you know if you're not talking you're more focused on your job so then you're gonna get more done so then therefore your performance reviews you know you want to be average you want to be you want to be average in the middle like not too hot like unless you really want to be a killer and go for it then you really you need to try hard at, like uh not be really invisible but uh that's a high risk high you know you get too close to the the flame you get burnt you know what i mean type of attitude but if you stay in the middle then when they think about cutting people they're going to cut off people you know the first people that, that uh, manage your teams uh when they're deciding to fire people are the best the first thing that when they when a management team thinks of the staff they think of the the, the loudest people first and the loudest people are usually the best and the worst so the people in the middle who are the silent majority they will never be thought of first. So like when management's like, okay, who do we fire? Okay, well, we can't fire these loud people because they're really good, but we could fire these really annoying people who just keep yapping and complaining and stuff like that. So it keeps you protected. And um, you'll survive a bunch of waves of cuts if you're productive and quiet. Um, so then this is kind of like a self-help tip slash also like a number, very, very important thing for longevity at a, at a place if you want to work somewhere for like five plus years. Uh, is, is setting daily goals and the reason why I said this is uh, it's good for you it, it is good for you I want to, I want you to succeed in what you're doing but the other thing is uh, I'm talking about here is that there's this thing called law of grow or die and there's no such thing as the same the only thing that's uh, constant is change so like when you look at like a graph of anything or whatever like when you look at like uh, charts or something like that I can't think of anything off the top of my head there's never ever 
like look at a stock chart there's never ever a straight line movement even like for um really stable things you think would be stable like currencies if you go look up currency like uh um, the only thing you can think of is like usdt which is a cryptocurrency tether or whatever even when they when you look at their chart over a period of time they are not straight lines they are they stagger so it looks a straight if you it looks like a straight line if you zoom out but if you zoom out on anything there's a constant rate of change nothing ever stays the same now with all that extra over uh, explaining there what i'm trying to say here is that you are either growing or you are dying when you see a plateau or something like if you're in a phase of life where you feel like nothing is changing you're stuck in a rut that's actually a transitional period and you need to be super aware of those transitional periods because um you are you're about to go up or down. That's like when you're testing a new, like you're either growing or you're dying. You know what I mean? But if you're at a uh, plateau where nothing's really happening, that means a new, you're in a, you're in a rut, you're stuck. That means you're, you're in a danger of like changing direction. So if you were going up and up and up and up and up and up and up, say you're like 20 to 30 to 30 to 40 to 40 and 50. I, I'm just, I'm not 50, so I can't really speak here, but 20 to 30, you're going up. If you ever notice that like in your twenties, this has happened to me personally. If you're stuck in a spot, then all of a sudden, everything plummets you know you think you're doing good you, you're in this like this where nothing's really happening you are at risk of actually uh losing something so then you need to start trying to switch things up get things going to try to like uh make sure that while you're in this transitional period that you go back into a growth period again that's what i'm saying this is what here have uh so then have you noticed that old people who retire seem to be die immediately or at least you hear about it all the time but people with jobs seem to live forever when they shouldn't be alive, it seems like. I'm not saying like, you know what I mean? Like I've worked with plenty of old people at a lot of different jobs who are like 70 plus and they're working at that factory or whatever. They're doing jobs and just, I'm, I look at them and I'm like, shouldn't you be not alive? Like, holy moly, you are still alive. That is crazy. And you can still walk around and do all this stuff. It's because they, they keep setting these little goals or whatever. Um, and they, uh, by going to work, they, they maintain um, their body has a need to live, so it keeps on living. But as soon as you stop using it, whatever, at that stage, you know, things affect you a lot more at that age and stuff like that. And yeah, that's kind of an extreme uh, example. I know it was a, a morbid picture, but to tie it all together, what you should be doing is setting small daily goals. So this is going to be good for you because then if you set goals, that means you're attempting to grow. You're attempting to grow. And if you keep trying to attempt to grow over a long period of time, you're good, there's more likely you're going to grow so you're going to avoid that death phase so that if you're avoiding the dying phase or the death phase or whatever um, then you're more likely to keep your job so that's what I'm saying like small goals like I'm going to get to work maybe a minute early today I'm going to get there five minutes early today I'm going to commit to trying to do an hour of overtime this week I'm going to commit to try to do you know that, that thing I keep forgetting um, I'm going to commit to not doing that you know what I mean like small daily attainable goals that you can you can see a result that day and if you keep doing that over a long period of time that's going to treat that's going to that's going to two things turn into real growth where you're maybe at a point in your career or working that you're making more money or doing something or in a better position than you ever imagined but then also because you're trying to grow in whatever uh position you're in you avoid being too close to the falling down to the bottom in the lower rungs that when manager te like manager teams decide to fire people you avoid that trap of being on the bottom rungs because you're you're slowly trying to rise away from the pack and it's also smart to do it small goals at a time so that other people don't notice because when you try to set goals or do anything good for yourself and people notice there's a lot of support from the people that love you but you have haters out there that hate you for whatever reason everybody's got them and once they see you're trying to do something with you they're freaking on you like moths to a flame and they want to see you fail crabs in a bucket pull your ass back down so those are all my main tips if you do these things you will have a better chance of keeping your job on what level i can't really say that but i know that it will point you it'll move the ticker the other direction if you feel like you're going to be losing your job if you do these three things it should start to shift shift the uh, paradigm back in your favor so i really hope this helps it helps people out and if you made it this far in this video i think you should subscribe i made a mistake making the subscribe ask too early in the video but i should try to just only ask people to subscribe at the end of my videos who uh, if you if you feel like you've gotten value and you want content daily content like this where it's self-help coaching growth stuff that i feel like i'm the channel for you and i feel like you should probably subscribe especially if you made it this far thank you very much for watching please leave a comment down below if there's anything you'd like me to talk about i uh, appreciate you guys this far and uh, i'll see you later